Hello and welcome to episode 95 of my Worm Unlimited tutorial series. This episode is going to be on making a range pole and a dioptra. And I've got a funny feeling that this is all going to go horribly wrong. Or at least a little pear shaped as some of you would say. The reason for that well, you're going to see that uh, making these two tools splits off in so many different directions, so many different items to put together. But anyway, this episode is dedicated to Star Grunkle and his wonderful family. For this episode was Star, Star Grunkle's idea, and I am very thankful to him for that except for the pain that this is causing me and all the different items I'm having to make. But anyway, setting that aside. To start with, here is some further information regarding bridges, all found out and supplied by Star Grunkle. Okay, now when in the last uh, episode when we was making the bridges and I was standing on the, the adjoining tile to where the bridge was going to be, I said that the tiles had to be completely flat. Well Star Grunkle has tested it and only the side of the tile where the border is adjacent to the bridge is adjoining the bridge that side needs to be flat. The other side of the tile doesn't need to be but the side of the tile adjoining your bridge needs to be flat. Remember though of course you need the slopes down on either side of uh, 10, minimum of 10. Okay, the next thing Star Grunkle found out. Both ends of your bridge do not need to be of the same elevation. One end can be higher, but then the slope of the connecting tile must be higher than 10 on the higher end. So, where we were just talking about the adjoining side of the tile to your bridge, so this is where the bridge would be. On the side where the elevation is higher, and we said that the slope needs to be 10 down, well if your elevation on this side is higher than the other end, then you need a minimum of 11 slopes down. So basically the higher your elevation of this side to the other side, the more slopes down you will need on each side of this uh, adjoining tile. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If not, Star Grunkle is a superior bridge builder and I'm sure we'll clarify in the comments if needed. Anyway, moving on. Right, lastly, Star Grunkle also managed to land two bridges on one tile. He said they were at right angles to each other. So that is how you can have one more than one bridge on the same tile. Thank you Star Grunkle for sharing your love of worm with us all. You have a very good heart and no doubt are a very good husband, father and grandfather. America is blessed by you and your family's presence. Thank you very much for sharing all this information with us. Okay, time for us to make the range pole. We will need four square pieces of cloth, each a minimum weight of 0 0.30 kilograms, eight conchinelles and one staff. So let's grab them items. So eight conchinelles, we need four square pieces of cloth, Notice that's the weight, so let's grab four of them. In fact, why don't I just do that? Make life a lot easier. Okay, so we've got four. Let's expand that so we can actually see. Okay, and lastly, we need a staff. Uh, where's the staff? There it is. Okay, so this is a tool, so the wood that I'm using is oak. Um, I'm ju just simply because it's at all, that's why I'm choosing oak. I don't know 100% whether it's there's any special wood um, for a range pole, but I'm just choosing oak and wood. 
Okay, so what we'll do, let's open up the crafting window. Forgive all these windows open, it's just simply because I'm having to work with lots of different materials in this episode. Anyway, so let's get the recipe window, and in there you can see I've put range pole. So we'll now add that to the crafting window. Notice it's going to be using carpentry, so let's add that. Okay, and we have a 78% chance. Well, my carpentry is 76 after all, so I should hope so. Right, and that will create our range pole, so let's create. Okay, so because it needs us to add further materials, we now need to right click on the unfinished range pole and add to the crafting window. And now we'll add the conchinels. And continue. and to spam the continue button why not okay now add the square pieces of cloth and continue and there we go we now have an oaken wood range pole now just to mention okay one of the defining things of how long your bridge can be and i did mention it in the last episode i'm quite sure but i'll mention it again because it's important one of the defining things for how long your bridge can be is the quality level of your range pole and the quality level of your dioptra. I would strongly recommend imping them both up before you attempt to build any bridges because then you can have longer bridges. Anyway, there is the range pole. Um, just to quickly read a few things about that. A range pole is used in surveying operations. It has bands of same thickness of alternating colours, white and red. When another player uses a dioptra on you, there will be an event window message as follows. Player waves at you, just signal to you, so make sure you are holding your range pole and you are facing them. A range pole is used by right clicking on the ground with it activated and choosing hold in the menu. Each window message will be, you hold the range pole vertically in front of you. You call out to the range pole, it better be ready now. Your arms have got tired holding the range pole vertical in front of you, so, so you stop. So just to show you what it's talking about, if we activate the range pole, right click on the ground and left click hold, you will see that it starts the process hey, but you will here. also notice that the stamina goes down that's why in the last episode I said I can't waffle much because Star Grunkle's stamina will run out as you can see it uses your stamina anyway I'm not building a bridge over my mind mine you can't anyway so I'm gonna stop there you are so that's what that was just talking about all should hopefully be clear with regards to range poles Okay, moving on. Next, let's make a dioptra. And this is where the madness begins because we are going to use two new alloys that I've not shown you. Basically, we're going to be using brass and bronze. Bronze is easier to create than brass. So if you're like me and your metal lurgy is... <coughs> excuse me, sorry, throat's going. It's probably that word that caused it. If your metal lurgy is only low, then you are better off starting by making bronze. Bronze is easier to make than brass. So that's what you should train up your metal lurgy with, making bronze. Okay, the three alloys you can make using metal lurgy is bronze, brass, and steel. Steel, we've yet to get to. Um, because there's some nice items we're going to make with that, but that's still a fair way off. For now, we're working with these alloys. Now, to make... Um, oops, let's not jump away from my notes. I need to keep some semblance of logic. Okay, so we need to start by making brass. That will then... We will then use that to make a pro protractor. The weight of the brass needs to be a minimum of 0 0.05 kilograms. Brass is made by combining zinc and copper. So I have some zinc. Now 
looking at that I don't even know if I have enough you see the problem is I was just doing some experiments earlier to see my failure rates and what I didn't realize is because I lumped all of my uh, zinc together when I made the brass it made a big lump of brass thereby not leaving me enough I don't think to now demonstrate this but I can still show you with the little I have so what you do to make brass double left activate your zinc right click on your copper create resources and lump notice it's not very high because my metallurgy is low but anyway I'll click on that yep it contains too little material well I did suspect that but there we go that's how you create brass once you have your brass <coughs> excuse me okay so once you have the brass then now we can make a protractor how do we make a protractor well let's bring in here and let's type in oops dioptra and let's expand that there's the protractor so what we will do is add that activate that and then let's have a look so we need a small anvil and a brass lump so I have a brass lump, let's grab that and the small anvil. Now I will add the protractor to the crafting window and I will click create. Okay, so we now have a protractor. Let's put the brass lump back in the forge. Okay, so we now have the protractor that we needed, moving on. Next we need to make some bronze. To make bronze you will use a copper lump and some tin. You activate either the copper or the tin. I'm not sure, I don't believe it matters which. Then just create and lump again. And there we go you'll see it'll chew up the whole chunk I believe yeah there you go see whack now I've got a big lump of bronze hopefully I'll find a lot of uses for this in the future because I've got quite a bit now let's just combine them both no okay it's not happy about that must be too big right okay let's just get rid of some of this items that we don't need so we only need one lump of bronze let's get rid of the biggest lump Fill it back in the forge. Okay, so we have our bronze. Now we can make a site. So again, what we will do to make life easy, we will type in Dioptra and expand and activate the site. Now if we look, we need bronze lump and a small anvil. So I have the small anvil and I have the bronze lump. We will right click, add to the crafting window. And there we are, that is our site. Let's create. And we now have a site. So let's drop the bronze back in. Oh, I've got alloys all over the place. Don't know, I'm getting a right, it's gonna be a right old mess here. I feel sorry for anyone that comes along to this area. There's going to be alloys and metals everywhere. Right, okay, so we've got our protractor, we've got our site. Next, we are moving on to make a fruit press. Don't believe that I've shown you making a fruit press yet. So I thought, well, no good showing you it without having made it previously. So to make a fruit press, um, let's just simply put it in here. There we go, there's the fruit press. Um, for making your alloys as well, I should mention, you can't. You, you should use the crafting window, always use the crafting window. I was just showing you old school because it's nice and visual to show you the activating one lump, right clicking the other lump and then just creating. Um, but of course, use the crafting window, it makes life a lot easier. Right, okay, so for the fruit press, we will need total materials two sprouts, one small nail, four planks, one shaft. Question, this is a tool, what wood should we be using? Okay, I've gave you time to think about that. The wood, of course, we should be using is 
oaken wood because it's a tool. Okay, so in order to start the fruit press, you need one shaft, one plank. So to be on the safe side, both my plank and my shaft, I have um, got of oaken wood. So I will add that to the crafting window and just check it's a fruit press, which it is. I'll create. Okay, so we have an unfinished. So let's add that to the crafting window. Okay, now we need to add the small nail. In fact, let's just add the planks. Oops, need to put them in my pocket. Then add them. Okay, whack that up, continue. Yeah, I'm gonna fail probably lots. Oh well, it went too bad. Using skills all over the board here, using fine carpentry for that, carpentry. Uh, lots and lots of skills are used in making a dioptra. Okay, next the small nail. So let's grab that. I mean, I probably could have done an episode on the fruit press. I probably could have done an episode on some of, uh, you know, probably I should have done episodes separating all of these components. And I don't know how long this episode's going to be, but I thought I'd take the chance in trying to get it all done. Right, okay, next two sprouts. The very last item I am leaving as my rare sprout because I want to try and make a rare fruit press. Why not? Try and impress you with my fruit press. Right, let's continue. Okay, and then of course the last item is my rare sprout, which I've been saving for ages. Finally got a use for it. Let's continue. Oopsie, we got the rare drum roll. But I didn't get a rare one. But it shows you, it exemplifies examples why you use your rare item last of all, because we nearly got a rare item. Right, we have the fruit press. Now, why did we want the fruit press? We needed the fruit press in order to make olive oil. In order to make olive oil, we need olives. Olives are here, so let's grab 10, just a random number. You can combine olives, I believe. Yeah, there we are. Activate the fruit press and right click olives and olive oil. But you can see my skills, what are we using at the moment? We are using beverages. And of course, I've not done an episode on beverages yet but we will make some lemonade eventually or some wine or something. That's coming that episode and it'll be a good one. For now, let's just try and make this olive oil. I'm not sure if I need a container to put it. I think it goes into the fruit press actually. Yeah, there you go. So we have olive oil. Now, let me just check what the minimum amount of olive oil so you know in future is what you need. We need 0 0.18 kilograms of olive oil as the minimum amount. So now that I know that, let's get back. Okay, 0 0.18, so we have enough olive oil. Right, okay. Next, moving along. Okay, why are we making olive oil? We're making olive oil because we need to make a compass. So that's why we're going through all these different steps. Okay, in order to make the compass now, we will need to a pottery jar. We need to activate the pottery jar, right click the olive oil, create tools and compass. And there's a good chance for making it, 91%. There we go, we've got an unfinished compass, so we right click, add to the crafting window. We now need to add a needle, and cunningly enough, I have a needle there. Okay, so let's add the needle, and continue. 
Okay, we now have a compass. Not very good quality level, but then I wasn't to notice you can't imp it as well. So basically what we're saying is the quality of your olive oil will determine the quality level of your compass. So do, and of course the quality level of your olive oil is gonna be bottlenecked by your beverages, all tied in together as the beautiful worm always is. So let's read you a little about the compass because it is in itself a very, very useful tool. Here's some notes from the wonderful Wormpedia. The compass gradually becomes unstable while moving and stabilizes again while standing still. While the compass is unstable, the direction cannot be seen. The quality of the compass affects stability. A fully unstable compass, compass will become readable in about two seconds at quality level 70. 10 seconds at quality level 30 and 20 seconds at quality level 1. Starter compasses quality level 20 will take 14 seconds to become readable. Stopping just after the compass becomes unstable will allow it to recover quickly. The compass was not fully unstable. And I've already told you about the compass can't be improved. Uh, yeah, so that's all I wanted to point out. So, you're asking the question, what's the point of you waffling on about the quality of the olive oil? What do I care what quality level my compass is? Surely if I've got a compass, I've got a compass, and I can see where I'm pointing in which direction. So why do you have to keep waffling on? Well, because of what I just read to you, you should appreciate now that if you had a 70 quality level 70 compass, and you was moving and it become unstable, you'd only have to wait two seconds before it appears and shows you your direction. Now, trust me when I tell you, when you're off wandering in the wild, getting lost, like I have so many times in the past, it's so handy to have it know in two seconds because it'll stop the bear or spider or whatever is chasing you from getting you because in two seconds you'll know which direction to head so there's why you want high quality compass yes waffling over and done let's move on goodness sake I could get myself lost in conversation just with myself talking about a compass right okay so I believe we are finally at the stage to make a dioptra so let's type in dioptra and see you're certainly going to earn your dioptra, that is for sure. So, there's all the components we need. The only thing I'm missing is a shaft. Do I have a shaft? Oh, I bet I don't have a shaft. Um, well, let's put that in the wagon. Okay, so I've got the protractor, I've got the sight, I've got the compass. I just need a shaft. No matter how thorough you try to be, get gathering materials, there always appears to be one thing which I forget. Okay, well anyway, let's look down here because if I'm lucky, there'll be a shaft in here. Unless everyone's helped themselves to the shafts, which I don't think they have. No, there we go. And this is a tool, so you've guessed it, I'll be using the oak shaft, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so We've got the components, let's add to the crafting window. Notice it uses blacksmithing for making the Dioptra. So we add to the crafting window and click create. I fail miserably, tell me about it. That's my life in a nutshell. Right, anyway, let's try again. There we go, we've got an unfinished dioptra. Let's try, let's add the unfinished to the crafting window. And we see we need to add the compass and the shaft. Oh, goodness sake. Now, who didn't read correctly? We need three shafts. Right, do we have three shafts? Let's have a look. If not, they're easy to make. I can reverse myself out of this hole I've just dug. But I'm sure I see another shaft. Oh, look, we've got 31. So that's good. So. If I need three shafts, I think there's two more I need to grab. Okay, so let's bring this window back up. I'm sorry about all the windows that are opening up. It gets a bit crazy, but this is worm. Okay, so let's continue. I'm trying to add my oak and wood shaft last, of course. Continue. Oh, 
oh wow, it doesn't want to add this. Must be really low quality. So I'm punishing myself. But I'm getting skills. So I don't care. There we go, right. Okay, let's add the compass next. And this really is low quality. It's probably going to fail and fail and fail. Yeah, like I said, it's going to fail and fail and fail. But there we are, we got there in the end. Right, lastly, the oak. Well, it's brass, actually, it's bronze, so it didn't really matter, did it? Which wood I used, because it's actually metal, which I should have realised when using the metal smithing, blacksmithing skill. But then again, that's me. So right, there we go, we now have a dry dioptra. And look at the pitiful quality level of it. I should be able to bridge build a bridge one tile long, don't you think? What good is that to man or beast? A bridge one tile long. Unless it's a moat that I'm going to build over a moat. So, basically, it's a good job I made a load of bronze. To imp a an item when it's using metals, you have to use the alloy that it's made of. So it's a good job that I have somewhere a load of bronze in my forge because guess who's got to spend time now imping up um, his dioptra because like I say a quality level of four is absolutely no good to man or beast anyway moving on we've got the dioptra done I will finish now by saying wherever you are in the world God bless you and keep every last one of you safe Thank you for watching and have a fantastic day. And thank you, Stargrunkle, for getting me to make this episode. Bless you.